good evening. We want to welcome you to this uh, broadcast tonight here at the Community Baptist Church. We're excited to have you along with us. And if you have your Bible, we want to take it and go to Acts chapter 3 tonight. Acts chapter 3, and uh, we're praying that God would just bless the reading of His Word tonight and bless the time together in His Word. I just want to share a thought the Lord has laid on my heart tonight and uh, something that uh, God has been dealing with me about and excited about what uh, we find here in Acts chapter 3. And uh, so, uh, take your Bibles there, Acts chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 19 tonight, verse number 19, Acts chapter 3, verse number 19. It says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Notice that phrase there in verse 19. It says, When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I begin to think on that phrase, and if you uh, mark things in your Bible, as I have marked in my Bible, that phrase, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, I begin to think about that word, refreshing. What does it mean to be refreshed? What does it mean to have a time of refreshing? The word refreshing really, literally means to give strength, new strength, or energy to. Uh, in this passage, it's dealing with the idea of, of breathing or refreshment after being heated with labor, Running, you've been, uh, the idea of a runner has been running or some of his exercising, they stop and take a breath, a breather. And, and it's the idea of someone has been working hard and now they have a time of renewing, uh, of starting fresh again. And times of refreshing are so important for each person's life. The times of refreshing are important for my life, for your life. We all need times where we're getting refreshed uh, physically, mentally, spiritually. But uh, there are also times spiritually speaking, that we need refreshing in our lives. Uh, the Christian life is made up of new beginnings, uh, starting fresh or starting something again, or maybe a renewed um, encouragement, uh, something that you need to start over. Maybe it's, I'm going to uh, start a fresh new of reading God's Word. I'm going to uh, start witnessing more, starting something different and, and starting something new. It's a time of refreshing. I'm reminded of a time in my previous ministry, I was a youth pastor serving at a church and our youth group did what we call a winter recharge. It was a, a, a one-time thing we did, and uh, we began to pray about this event and, and asking God to really meet with us in a special way. And so we uh, rented a, a, a large, massive cabin there in the Smoky Mountains, a, a place that people often get away to. And our youth group set off to go to this weekend recharge, and it was a time for us really to set our spiritual uh, reset button as a youth group, but it truly was that and much more, all because we had a, a time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. It was a time where our group gathered around the Word of God to study the Word of God, to pray, to seek God's face, and it really was that point that our, our youth group had a turning point, spiritually speaking, all because of a time of refreshing in God's Word. And here in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, we find this very thought of a time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. And what happens when we have these times of refreshing while in the presence of the Lord? I want to give you four things tonight. Right out here, the scriptures, we're going to go through these things pretty quickly tonight for time's sake. But look down to verse 1 in chapter 3. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom... They lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask uh, alms of them to enter into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. So what happens when we have a time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord? First of all, there will be a refreshing of concern or care for others around us, a time of a refreshing of concern or care for others around us. Notice, first of all, that we see the need. There was a need here, we find, in these first three verses. There was a man who was lame from his birth, a man who had been crippled most of all of his life, who sat daily at the temple begging people to help him, begging people to give him what he needed. There was a need. 
There was an obvious need here, but also there was a noticing. This man had sat daily at the temple where people would gather to worship, gather to pray, gather to gather around God's word. And, and people walk, probably would have walked by this man multiple times, not even really noticing him. But it was a day, particular day in Acts chapter 3, where Peter and John came by this man and saw this man, and they took notice of him. Peter, not just took notice of him, but notice the verse in verse 4. It says, he fastening his eyes upon him. So Peter, I imagine fastening your eyes upon something. Peter began to gaze at this man and look at this man and watch what was taking place with him and how he was crippled. And he noticed the man was in great need. But then we find not only a time of refreshing concern or care, there's a need, uh, the noticing of this man, but also I want to say this tonight. I want to say thirdly, when we see a, a refreshing of concern or care, we see the name of Jesus his name is glorified. Look at verse 6 again. Let's read this together. I think this is a great verse for us to take notice here. Actually, the next few verses. Peter didn't have much to offer this man, but here's what he said. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter, I imagine, didn't have a lot of things to his name. He didn't have uh, much wealth or much to give this man, but he did have something of importance to give this man. It was Jesus he had Jesus to give him, and he offered him the Lord, and, and uh, really a refreshing of concern for this man was that he was going to offer him the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't have anything to give him great. There was nothing marvelous about this other than the fact that he had Jesus to give him. Can I remind you tonight, it's simply this, is that we have Jesus to give to people if we know Christ as our personal Savior. We have Jesus Christ to share to the world that's lost and dying. And, and most importantly, in this time of great need, we have Jesus to give to those around us. We can share uh, Jesus to those people in need. We don't have to necessarily, there's opportunities to help people in need. There's opportunities to, to admit, give uh, a financial help to somebody. Maybe it's to help somebody with a need that they have, maybe a work or a job or something they need. But more importantly, through those things, we should give people Jesus if we know him personally. So there's a time of refreshing for concern and care. Let's go on down in the passage. These things are right out of the scriptures here tonight, and I want to give these here uh, to you quickly as we move on. Notice down to verse number 9 and 10. So we, uh, what happens when we have times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord? We see a concern or care, but there will be also, secondly tonight, there will be a refreshing of change or a refreshing for change. Look at verse number 9. All the people saw him walking and praising God. So the people around were watching what was taking place as, as Peter and John healed this man in the name of Jesus. And verse number 9, or verse number 10, and they knew it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to them. You know what happened? These people, as they watched what Peter and John were doing and, and uh, serving the Lord and, and, and healing this man in the name of Jesus, people watched what were taking place. There was a, a change about their spirit that day. You imagine being a person who walked by that person day after day after day and who sat there and begged and who sat there and asked for help each and every day. And all of a sudden, one day, this man now was walking. He was leaping. Not only that, he was walking about praising God. I imagine he was singing and worshiping the Lord, he was really a changed man. But realize, first of all, realize they realized who it was. They realized that this was the man they saw each day at the temple. They realized what was happening, the one who they seen often. They now are realizing this was the man who was lame. But also, secondly, under this, we think about they recognized what had happened. They recognized what had happened. They noticed a change in this man. It wasn't just a physical change which happened he was now walking but it was also a spiritual change there was something different about him it caused them the bible says they were filled with wonder and amazement those are pretty powerful words you know when you see something you're like man that's that's really that's really cool or that's really great but when you use those terms wonder and amazement they they saw something different that day concerning this man all because of this refreshing of the time in the presence of God. These, Peter and John were, were in the presence of God. This man now was praising God, and he was in the presence of God. And so what happened, a change was taking place in the lives of these people. But it brings us really to our next point. Look at verse number 11. We find a third time of refreshing or type of refreshing in the presence of God. There will be a refreshing of confronting. 
there will be a refreshing of confronting. Look at verse 11. We're going to read down to verse 18. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly, here's what this says, they greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead. Wherefore we are witnesses. And his name through faith and his name hath made this man strong whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot not what that through ignorance he did it, he did it as did also your rulers. But those things which were God before had showed by the mouth of all the prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. So notice this confronting. These were powerful words Peter said to the people. As they were watching what was taking place, they were watching what was happening. This man had a need. He had a, a, a really a time of, 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 really, it was a time of refreshing of Peter concerned and, and was caring about this man. But then there was a time of change in the presence of God. But thirdly, we see a, a time of refreshing of comfort or confronting. Peter was confronting the people. There, notice, first of all, the chaos that was going on. They were wondering, verse 11, it talks about the people watching what's taking place. And at the end of that verse, it says they were greatly wondering. They were, it was chaos going on. How is this man who was lame is now healed and, and he's walking and leaping and praising God? They, they were, it was chaotic. And most of the time when people are confronted with the truth or when people are confronted with something that they need to change, there is confusion. Oftentimes, maybe you're in your spiritual walk with the Lord, you find uh, when the Lord confronts you and the Word of God confronts you, you're, you're confused. God, I, I didn't know that. Or I, 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 did, I didn't understand that. But once you understand it and, and what, you understand what's happening, God is confronting you or the Holy Spirit of God is showing you something that needs to be changed. And so Peter used this as an opportunity to call out the people. So we see chaos in this time of confronting, but we also see a time of calling out or or, or really, he was, he was actually really confronting these people in a sense. Peter, Peter hit him head on. He said, why are you surprised that this even happened? Why are you even, uh, even questioning what happened? You were the ones who denied Christ first. You were the ones that chose a murderer over Christ uh, going to the cross. And you chose Jesus to suffer. And, and even though this was God's plan all along, Peter took them from the focus off of themselves. Peter could have took the glory for it, could have said, look what we've done, look what we've accomplished, but Peter put the glory back on the Father. He called him the Holy One, the, the Just One, and, and, and he was putting the, the, the glory back on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. But here's the great truth about this on this time of confronting. Not only is there chaos, uh, there was a time of calling out, Peter's questioning, why are you marveling at what's taking place? But there's also a chance a chance for them to turn back to the one they had originally denied, the one they had uh, uh, torn, uh, cho chose, the murderer, as I said, over Jesus. Peter was using the situation for them to have opportunity back to God. God is a God of second chances. And don't miss the opportunities to turn back to the Lord. Don't miss the opportunities when God confronts you with your sin, when he shows you you're wrong, when he shows you you have something in the way of your relationship with the Lord, don't miss the chance that he's given you, the opportunity to turn back to him. Times of refreshing, of confronting are important for us. But here's the final uh, time of refreshing we find in the presence of God. We find, as we mentioned tonight, there's, there's a refreshing for concern or care for those around us as Peter and John healed this lame man. Uh, there's a time of refreshing of change. It has to take place. Uh, change is not always bad. Change can be good. And there was a time of change as they watched and realized what was taking place. And there's a time of refreshing, of, of confronting, showing, showing that this was a, uh, a group of people that once denied Christ and once rejected him, now the opportunity to accept him. And then notice lastly in our verse 19 and 20 we read originally, we see a, a time of refreshing of confession. Uh, of a time of refreshing of, uh, refreshing of confession. 
Look at verse 19 and 20 again. I'm going to read it one more time for uh, us to remember these verses. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And we read this already. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Here, let me give you two things we think about this time of confession. Now, as God's word confronts us, as maybe your pastor is speaking or our pastor is preaching, and uh, God's word is presented, and you hear the word of God spoken, there, there has to be a time of confronting, knowing, hey, look, I've sinned, I've done wrong, and I need to confess it and move forward. And, and this verse here we find, first of all, there's a decision, a decision to repent of of our sin and of our wrong and our, our things we've done, maybe that's hindering our relationship with the Lord. Maybe you're watching this and you don't know the Lord as your Savior. Repent right now and ask Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior. It's a decision. And then secondly, we find there must be a determining. Determine tonight. Determine right now as you're watching this, whenever this may be, to be in the presence of God Almighty. This is where the time of refreshing will come from. We all desire and need times of refreshing. I think amidst this virus and this pandemic that's happening, is there more importantly than ever, do we need to have times of refreshing? I'm so thankful for the times of refreshing that I personally have had in the recent weeks where I've gotten alone in God's Word. I sat on my back porch. I've sat in my office. I've sat uh, wherever I can find a quiet place, and I've had those times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. I'm thankful for those. You know, but what happens in those times of or of refreshing, you know what, I'm going to have a, God is showing me a concern and care for other people, people who need help, people who need prayer, people who need uh, something, but also there has to, there's a time of, of refreshing, uh, of change, God's word has changed my life, God's word has, even in recent weeks, as I was even reading through this passage just a few weeks ago, uh, God's word changed really me inward, outward, and, and that's the work of the Holy Spirit. But then there's a, a, a time of refreshing, of confronting. God's word confronts us. It hits the, James refers it to as a, a mirror. As we look in the mirror and, and need to fix something or fix areas that need to be uh, different. And then it has to be a refreshing of con confession. Confession that I'm going to forsake what I've done and give it to the Lord and turn to Him and determine to be in the presence of God Almighty. I, I, I finish with this tonight. Do you need a time of refreshing? Do you need a time of refreshing in the presence of Lord? Well, here's the key to that, is get in the presence of God. Maybe find a quiet place where you are watching this right now and get along with God and spend time in His presence. Ask Him to confront you, to give you concern for others, to uh, give you a time where you need to see your sin and see yourself uh, as God sees it and, and find that time of refreshing in the presence of Lord. My friends, thank you for watching, and I pray that you will have these times of refreshing in the days ahead, and that God and His Word will help you and continue to use this passage in your own life. Thank you for watching.